are listening to Tim McKinney of ITW Evercoat. Evercoat, the brand trusted by more shops for automotive, commercial, and marine repairs than any others for almost 70 years. Bringing you continued innovations like light speed repair system to streamline and improve repairs at the speed of light. Optex filler with color changing technology and Optex super build with a built in guide coat. And now, here's Tim. Hello everyone, Tim McKinney with Evercoat. Hey, coming at you from our studio here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Wanted to kind of touch a little bit on fiber reinforced fillers. Well, what are they? How do you use them? What are some recommendations? Well, first off, before you use any kind of fiber reinforced filler, my best recommendation is always, always, always make sure you're using the proper PPE, the personal protection equipment. If you're sanding on fiberglass, grinding on fiberglass, you, you don't want that stuff in your eyes, trust me. You don't want it in your nose, trust me. So wear the right glasses, wear the right uh, a respirator or dust mat, particulate mask. And you know, I even say, wear some gloves and uh, long sleeves, trust me. If you haven't worked with fiberglass, you will always remember your first time working with fiberglass. So what is it? All right, so a fiber reinforced filler is a basically a body filler that has fiberglass in it to give it strength, to make it stronger, to make it more robust. So when would you use it? First off, always look at a fiberglass repair or a composite repair and say, okay, do I need to use resin and mat or could I use a fiber reinforced product? Uh, for more information on that, we've got some other podcasts that are going to be coming out or have already come out for a little bit of information about that, but we're going to talk about fiber reinforced filler for today. So always prep the surface as best as possible and give a good feather edge. So I've got one on about ghosting that talks about that. You want to make sure if it's fiberglass or a composite, you have a nice wide bevel edge compared to the ratio of the thickness of the material. That's even going to work for a fiber reinforced product. Uh, just putting a fiber reinforced product into a hole, uh, odds are it's going to map on you. You're going to have some something called a thermal expansion and contraction taking place and that hole may map up into your, uh, your paint job. So good proper feather edge is really going to help that out. So we've got products that are short strand and we've got products that are long strand. So I'll kind of talk about the shorter strand first. Some of our products that have a very short strand, they looked almost like, uh, imagine a fiberglass dust money. That's about the best way I can explain it. So we've got a product called Everglass that has that fiberglass dust bunny mixed in with the filler, for lack of better terms, to give it some extra strength. Um, tried and true, it's a very strong, very dense, very robust product. And its close cousin, if you will, would be Glass Light. Now Glass Light is formulated very similar to that, but what we've done with that is, is we've put micro bubbles into it to make it easier to sand. So it's strong, but a little bit easier to sand. So I would use those products if I've got a, a small hole that's maybe rusted through, or I've got an area that I've welded and I want to give a little bit more strength to kind of finesse that area out. And even, even still, when you put these kinds of products over top of a welded area, you want to grind that down as smooth as possible because any irregularity or deformation on the surface as this area heats up and moves around a little bit, and trust me, it happens with every material. Uh, it's called thermal expansion. My son's going to college and was trying to explain all of that to me. I knew enough to be dangerous, but as my son was explaining it to me, I was getting the glazed over look in my eyes. I know I did. But as things heat up and expand and contract, that surface irregularity could map up through it. So try to get it as smooth as possible before you put these products on, uh, whether it's the short strand or even the long strand. But they work really good to help hold down the repair areas like that for uh, the welded seams, panel bonded areas. Uh, so you know, those, either of those products would really work. But whenever you're using a fiber reinforced product, best recommendation, always leave enough room to apply a skim coat of a premium filler or a putty over top of it. And here's why. Fibers absorb. Yeah, fibers will absorb solvent. So when you put the primer on it, guess where they go? They get sucked down into the repair. 
So having something over top of it that helps to seal off those fibers is going to be helpful. Uh, even if you're going to put a polyester primer over top of it, not a bad idea to put a skim coat of a, a premium filler or putty over top of it. So from there, we get into a product called FiberTech. Now, FiberTech can be used in the same areas as the Everglass and the Glass Light. The benefit for FiberTech is that it's what we call a multi-strand. So it lays down pretty smooth, but it's got some longer strands in it that you'll actually see and it's reinforced with Kevlar. Now, Everglass is also reinforced with a small amount of Kevlar, so that's why both of those are a really good kind of universal uh, products to have around the shop for a variety of different things. If you're getting into composite repairs, that is where FiberTech really is going to shine. Uh, it works on metal as well, so if you've got a panel that's wanting to what we call oil canning, I tried to explain this to a younger technician the other day, and he had no clue what I was talking about for oil canning. Uh, for those of you that don't know what oil canning is, is when the panel is just about 51% uh, happy one way, 49% happy the other way. So if you push on it, to where you're, depending on where you apply pressure, it wants to pop in or pop out. It's pretty much neutral and will go either way. So make sure if you have a panel like that and you want to hold it in one particular location, that is where uh, putting a fiber reinforced product over top of it. Taking the tension out of that metal is always going to be the best. But if you got a panel like that, not a bad idea to, to use a fiber reinforced product to help hold it into location. So Everglass, short strand, dust bunnies, a little bit of Kevlar, good strong stuff. FiberTech, longer strands, Kevlar, stronger stuff. Point I'm making about this is the longer the strands, the stronger it is. And that brings me to my last product here. And I say product, not products, because we have tiger hair and kitty hair. Tiger hair and kitty hair are the same products. Uh, we've been made, they were different for many, many years, but around the mid 90s, they started transitioning to being the same products. So they are the same material. If you run out of fiber tech, or I'm sorry, if you run out of tiger hair, uh, you could use kitty hair. If you run out of kitty hair, you could use tiger hair. I hear a lot of folks say that they sand different ways. Nope, exact same product. Sorry, I hate to tell that to you, but they are letting, letting a little secret out here. Those products work very well for composite repairs or larger holes. So if you've got a rust repair you're trying to do and you're trying to save a panel and there's no options for replacing the metal or it's too difficult to do work, maybe that's beyond your skill sets. That's where a product like tiger hair or kitty hair comes into place. And as far as spreading them smooth, well, you kind of smear them where you want them to go. They're not going to spread very easy and they're not going to lay down very easy. And I'm just being honest here because of those long strands. And when you pull the material out of the can, you're going to swear those strands are about three inches long. So that's why as you're manipulating and moving the product, it just kind of, you know, they, they want to fold over themselves. So again, definitely a product for both of them, the tiger hair, kitty hair, that you're going to want to put a skim coat of a filler or a putty over top of uh, before you go to a primer. And again, high, a high build polyester primer like Super Build or Super Build Optics works great over any of these repairs. But again, put a skim coat down over top of it just to kind of help seal it off. And trust me, you're not going to get that repair perfectly straight with the fiber reinforced materials when they're long strand. You're going to need some kind of intermediate coat of something to kind of take out the high spots and low spots and make it a little bit easier to work with. And, you're going to save yourself a lot of time. Don't think you're going to get it perfectly straight with the tiger hair, kitty hair. Get it close and then put the other product over top of it. Now, the last product I have to kind of talk about in this range, it's kind of a, a different product, and that would be our panel bonding material called Vet Panel Adhesive. Now, Vet Panel is a great product. Uh, it's been around for many years. It's one of those products that works great as a uh, a filler material as well as an adhesive. It can be used to bond uh, FRP, which is fiber reinforced uh, polyester, just plain fiberglass, or SMC, sheet molded composite or sheet molded compound, depending on what they say. And it works for both of those applications as well. It can be used with a little bit of fiberglass cloth or fiberglass mat. If you've got a heavier repair and you're looking at it and think, well, it kind of needs something else to to make it stronger because vet panel adhesive filler 
does not have any fibers into it. It's primarily just a, think of it like a sticky polyester that helps to work kind of as a finishing material. If you're using it for panel bonding for a, a backer strip for like a, a vet panel application, just had that question come in as a matter of fact, uh, you don't want to have it clamped so tight that you squeeze out all the material. So if you've got a gap that's in there, maybe wetting the surface with a little bit of the fiberglass cloth to help to fill in that gap, but you want to make sure you've got enough squeeze out and there's enough material left in there to give you the adhesive quality you're looking for. If you've got a gap that's going to be uh, less than an eighth of an inch uh, and tighter, then yeah, using it by itself would be fine. If it's an eighth of an inch or more or around three millimeters, then you're probably going to want to put a little extra layer in there to help build in that gap of the fiberglass uh, mat in with the VET panel to help fill that in and make it a stronger bond. Likewise, you can also use it with cloth. Uh, when you use cloth versus mat, that's, for, that's a topic for another podcast. So when you use that product, especially if you've used it with the fiber reinforcing material, again, you're going to want to put something over top of it, a skim coat of a, uh, a filler uh, like Rage Optics, Rage Ultra, or a skim coat of a putty, and then follow that up with a uh, high build polyester primer. If you're using that more as a finishing material, then come back over top of that with a polyester primer because the polyester primer in combination with the VET panel works very well. Personally, if I'm going to be using any kind of fiber reinforced repairing material and as a finishing adhesive material to have around, my two go-to products have been FiberTech and VET panel for many, many years. All right, now the last product is a metal reinforced product we have that's called Metal to Metal. Now it's an aluminum reinforced product, a little bit different. No fibers, but it contains aluminum. Now with that product, it's the only one we have as a filler that comes with clear hardener, liquid hardener called MEKP. Don't use cream hardener, the, the BPO cream hardener, the uh, uh, benzoyl peroxide because while it may harden, it's not fully curing. That resin is designed to work with the MEKP. Reference a size of a golf ball with about 12 drops. Now people ask, well, what the heck is the size of a golf ball? If you figure about the amount of volume that a golf ball would displace into a cup, so I would say if you're going to be weighing it out, you know, kind of have a reference of a golf ball size for it and add the 12 drops. It, we're not trying to go for the exact size here. If you think it's a little bigger than the a golf ball, add an extra drop or two. If you think it's a little bit smaller than a golf ball, then maybe you know, put in about uh, 10 or 11 drops versus the 12. But you want to make sure that you're using good, fresh liquid hardener for those products because the liquid hardener, because it's in a clear tube, if it's set around the sun, it can degrade a little bit. So always make sure you've got good, fresh liquid hardener when you're using the metal to metal. It's a product that can conduct electricity. So a lot of people will think, well, I'll use that for a, a guide coating application. The problem with that is when you reach the temperature to, to get a good, uh, sorry, um, not guide coating, a, uh, had a mental uh, lapse there for a second, for powder coating. Thank you very much, Tim. Well, you're welcome, Tim. So for powder coating application, you want to be able to have the product melt. So the guide coat's going to go on in a powder and then actually melts together to make a very smooth, slick finish, depending on what temperature you're getting it up to. Well, you get too high of a temperature, you start degrading the resin that's in the metal to metal. So that's why for you know quick flash powder coat applications where you're not going to get above uh, 290 degrees of a peak metal temperature, you might be okay. I always say test it. So the analogy I to use for that one is if you're going to powder coat a, a motorcycle, it might work on the fenders, it's not going to work on the frame, and it's not going to work on the, uh, the transmission or the engine. Too much thermal mass takes longer to heat, longer to cool, so it's not going to work for those applications. There are other products out there that work better for powder coating applications that can go to much higher temperatures. But if you're looking for a product that's going to be a metal filler to work on metal, uh, for restoration, that seems to be a very popular product. Metal to metal is a pretty good product for that. So to kind of recap here real quick, think of the 
product Everglass and Glass Light with the fiberglass bunnies, you know, for thinner filling applications or for smaller holes, like little tiny rust holes. Think of FiberTech as a more universal long strand and short strand, kind of works for both of those applications. And think of the Tiger Hair Kitty, kitty Hair products to be used for larger holes, rust repair applications, uh, or for just some general uh, fabrication you're trying to fill in some areas. But always remember, for all of these products, make sure you've got a good proper feather edge to give that material enough surface area to bite onto to help cut down on any kind of repair mapping. So that's it for today. Uh, as always, stay safe and stay safe out there.